Hey folks, it's Jeff again. Um, I was asked by Mike to kind of do a mini painting tutorial, we'll say. Um, I'm going to use the airbrush vice using just a regular brush, but I was going to kind of explain the process of what I do in order to paint my ultramarines. <laughs> As I've said in the past, I've got quite a large collection of Ultramarines. Uh, I was currently trying to build the Thousand Man Company, if you will. Um, so I've used a lot of different blues over the years. Um, you know, the main primary one being the Ultramarines Blue, the original Citadel paint pots, which you can still get this color, but it's through coat to arms. Um, but over the years, I've just kind of adapted to different colors, anywhere from the Ultramarine Blues by Reaper, or the Dark Blue by Vallejo. Um, and in so many words, you know, we got our blue uh, from issue number three, which is essentially the the, the, the McCrag Blue base. Um, and here's the old McCrag Blue paint. And I don't know if you can see, but it is a different color. Um, the benefit <laughs> being is I've used this one's dried up now. I've used it and it's dried up, so I can get rid of it. What I'm going to do instead of using the base McCrag Blue, I've got two more uh, McCrag Blue Air. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use this or demonstrate how to use this through the airbrush to paint these, which is the same thing I've done currently for the four Ultramarines that I have currently. Um, before I crack open this, so I'll use up the last two that I have of, you know, my airbrush paints before I do this. Um, and i just showing you these as an example of the different blues that are out there, ultramarine blue-wise, from, you know, Citadel, Vallejo, and Reaper. So, without further ado, um, one of the first things that you could do, this comes airbrush ready, this airbrush Citadel paint. If you were using your pot that you got from issue three, um, you would, for all intents and purposes, have to use airbrush flow improver because that paint is pretty thick, excuse me, coming right out of the pot, which is the same with the model color from Vejo. I mean, it's a little thick. The Reaper paints is a little thick. Um, and that's just due to the pigment that's actually in the paint itself. Um, so you would want to use some airbrush airbrush flow improver to help that uh, flow through the airbrush easier. Now I'm just using a Patriot 105. It's basically the starter airbrush for just about any hobbyist in this hobby that paints models. I mean just because it costs about a hundred bucks and um, they're pretty easy to get a hold of and parts are very easy to get a hold of also. Um, it's the one that I always recommend to friends that are you know wanting to start out or try airbrushing. Um, so I think it's pretty appropriate. I mean, it gets the job done. Um, you can change the different needle sizes, so um, that way, you know, you can get a different pattern with your, uh, your airbrush um, or spread of paint coming out. But what I'm going to do is basically get the captain from issue five and then the three aggressors from issue six um, all painted up with the McCrag Blue. Um, and then when those are dry, I'll probably turn the camera back on and then start going through the paints that we have thus far. Uh, which is the, if I can remember correctly, I think we've got six, seven paints already. I think it's seven. So, and I'll go through all those paints and apply those to each of the Space Marines and the Necrons. The only thing I'm going to be doing different on the Necrons is I'm going to paint their, I guess you call them shoulder pads. Um, instead of painting them that canoptic color that we will get in the future, I'm going to go ahead and paint those pink. <laughs> Susie wanted pink shoulder pads. Uh, she wants to customize the army to her liking. The fact that she wants an army, the fact that she's enjoying playing and kicking my butt, um, has actually made me quite happy. So I'm going to end up using probably a couple different paints. So I'll use uh, the Emperor's Children because I like that pink. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, edge highlight it with the Fulgrim pink uh, and give her a nice little uh, spread there on her Necrons to personalize them herself. So what I usually do is I take a cheapy brush from, uh, I get mine from Walmart, I think it's a buck something a 
pack of, I don't know, 10 or 20, whatever it is, or a couple bucks, but they're not much. I just take this number four. They're all junk. I mean, most of the time they, the tip breaks off. And then when the tip breaks off, I just use these as stir sticks um, for most of my pots to kind of bring them back to life. Uh, now I'm going to shake this on one of my Vortex shakers uh, to kind of get this paint prepped. But I'm going to pour it straight into the airbrush pot. And then I'm going to slowly but surely show you exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to airbrushing. Now with this stuff, like I said, it's right off the bat, ready to go, right into the pot. Now some people do put um, a little bit more flow improver in there. I have not figured that I needed to. Um, it seems to flow out pretty decent on its own. So I find it to be pretty eh, ready to go out of the cup. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can. Basically what we're looking for when we use these is kind of a milk consistency um, is what they're they recommend, we'll say. So when you put your flow improver in and you put your regular pot of paint in, um, and I usually use like a two to one mixture, two um, drops of you know my base paint with one drop of flow improver. Prover. And I'll put the flow improver in first. Then what I'll do is I'll back flow it to kind of mix it up. You'll get a nice little bubble effect. Sorry, I want to make sure it was on camera. When I do that, then I basically know that it's, you know, ready to go, ready to come out of the airbrush. Um, what I do is I, the easiest way to do it is just to go for it. I'm not a professional airbrusher by no means. Um, I would not claim to be. There are so many people out there that are amazing. Uh, I find Kenny Boucher uh, from Next Level Painting to be amazing. Um, I love watching Casey from eBay Miniature Rescues. That guy can, you know, he used the airbrush kind of like the way I do, but he is way better when it comes to getting in awful clothes and being able to put some highlights and things like that or where I haven't. I still need to practice to get better at that. But when it comes to the, you know, I guess you'd call it the... Now, just the essentials of getting it based, I'm pretty good at that. And I, I keep my airbrush setting on about 20 to 25, and I leave the majority of my, my black undertone in there, because what I'm trying to do is create a shadow effect. Hopefully you can hear me okay over the airbrush, you know, whining. But I find that this just seems to go so much faster, so much smoother, leaving those shadows in there. Also helps eliminate having to come back later and produce shadows where all I need to do then is essentially produce those highlights. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And like I said, I usually will put a couple coats on just to make sure I've got decent clearance, uh, but not too much. And it only takes a little bit of practice to get this down, but I kind of go for the grim dark look. So when it comes down to the blue paint, you'll notice it does look dark, and that's because I am leaving a lot of that shadow in there um, for when I go ahead and come back and put my drac uh oh, what's it called? Draken, Drakenor Nightshade or whatever it is, <laughs> the, the shading um, that I'll come back and do down the road. Um, now I know that doesn't come in the magazine, so I probably will not um, go for that on these models at first. Um, now one thing I try to do is give it a chance to dry a little bit. I'll come back and I'll slap a little bit more paint on. But again, the way I do it is if I can't see it, you know, from a good foot or two away, I don't try to get the airbrush in there to get it. I leave that as a shadow. So I don't fret over trying to get these perfect. Um, now when it comes to the way the magazine shows you and painting them up, Oh yeah, I mean, you're gonna be able to get your brush in there, you're gonna be able to do your thing, and they look pretty good, um, in my opinion. I just, I am all about trying to get a nice, beautiful effect as quickly as I can, and as light as I can, still leaving those shadows in there. So I won't go too far up underneath the armpits of this Space Marine. I'll try to stay out of Oh, I guess you'd call it the shadows as much as I can so that I still have that nice dark recess. But if you'll notice, when it comes to painting like the book shows us, which I have done that, um, it does take a while. 
Where this, I can get the same effect pretty quick, uh, especially with my base coats. Um, and as I get better, you know, I'll be able to pull in and come out to, to get me a nice um, effect for a, a decent glow or whatnot. But, you know, when it comes down to it, I'm not really worried about that. I want them to look old, beat up, and battle ready. And if you'll notice, I mean, look how quick that was with just the two. Now I'm going to grab number three, or yeah, number three, and then work on that and grab number four, and then I'll be done. And then I'll show you how I clean the airbrush out, because a lot of people are always, well, they don't want to try to start with the airbrush because it is a pain to clean, and it is until you get that down. But I'll try to show you a quick and easy way that definitely works for me. I know Mike is uh, trying to get better at his airbrush, and I, I told him I would love to do this video to even help teach him. So, I mean, like I said, I'm not a pro, but if I can help somebody out and making things a little bit easier for you in your hobby, I think that is awesome. Just because, for me, this hobby is very relaxing. Um, my wife has allowed me to do it, and I say allowed because, you know, we have kids, we have bills, we have this, we have that. I mean, now all of our kids are grown up now. I mean, our, our babies are 21, so. Our, our new babies are the dogs that you hear in the background, our, our, uh, our crazy, uh, oh, guard beagles as I would call them. And the one you always hear in the background, that is Ripley, or Sir Ripley, our beagle. And then our eh, not so high pitched one, but a lower scarier one is the female, and that's Rue. She's our lemon. Lemon meaning the, the color. <laughs> So hopefully you guys are able to see what I'm doing here and how quickly I'm able to do this. But if you'll notice, one of the things that I love about airbrushing, and you'll notice I'm not going crazy on this. I am not trying to get every nook and cranny. I am trying to get it simply covered with a base coat. You'll notice how quick this goes. And the neat shadows that are created based on me just trying to get a base coat down. Now I can always go back and fill in more if I want, but for me, I don't want that. And that's what I think the nice thing about this hobby is even Games Workshop it encourages it, along with most of the amazing miniature painters that you're gonna see online, uh, they all encourage it too. It's your model, paint it how you want. If it makes you happy, then you're doing the right thing. And if you're playing with it and you feel good and you can even get one person that's like, wow, you did a great job, that definitely makes you feel good. But again, like I said, I'm not going crazy. I'm just trying to get the blue covered. Okay. So. And I'm trying to leave those shadows in there, like you'll see right underneath the gorget. So. And then I'll come back with the other colors and, and paint those in. But yeah, now you'll notice. I have just knocked out these four that quick with a base coat. So now the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and clean this airbrush out. Usually what I'll do is if I have excess, I will dump it all right back in the pot just to save. And I even do that too when I put airbrush flow improver in there, this stuff, I will also dump that back in the pot because I don't feel that I need to waste this stuff. Now, I don't seem like I have a bunch, so, uh, so I think I'm good there. I think I'm just, all right, I got a few drops, so that's good. Okay, folks, I am now going to make the attempt to show you how to clean an airbrush after you get done using it. So I basically used up a whole pot of McCrack Blue, and now it is time to clean this airbrush out before it gets functified or nasty. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some regular water and I'm going to spray it in my cup. And this uh, Folgers coffee can, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, is what I call my hobo bucket. I got that from uh, Kenny Boucher over at uh, Next Level Painting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to spray this out because I don't want the paint to dry. All right. The whole key with an airbrush is to keep it 
wet. If you can keep it wet inside um, through this process, nothing will dry, okay? Uh, and then you don't really have to disassemble the whole thing when it comes down to it. So I just use an old toothbrush. Um, I get a little water going in there. And I try to clean as much of the outside and whatnot as I can, all right? Uh, and like I said, the whole purpose to this is to oh, clean it off as best as I can. Now, I still have white paint, black paint, you name it. Uh, but the, in uh, the inside of the cup is what looks clean. And that's all I care about is the inside of the cup on top of uh, my actual needle itself, okay? Um, now what I do is I have an extra needle that's all bent and angled from uh, well, a couple of years of use. Oh, there's Ripley, so I apologize, folks. Um, and I use that to actually pick at and mash around my uh, the inside of the cup to scrape paint. So, one of the things I'm going to do next is kind of dry this off, the outside of the cup anyway. And I'm going to get what we call airbrush cleaner, okay? Uh, hopefully you can see this. It's for media. Um, it's basically the easiest one to get online. I usually get mine through uh, Amazon, uh, so nothing special. I just take the lid off, I put a little in the cup, hopefully I'm not too far in the way. And then what I do is I put the cap back on because I have a habit of knocking things over. So then I will spray some of this into my hobo bucket. But what I will do on top of that airbrush cleaner is I will scrape the inside of this thing with my toothbrush. And one of the things I will do is I will get the tip, all right, the tip of the airbrush. You'll hear a lot of airbrushers and a lot of miniature painters always say, you know, just the tip. Well, this is what they're talking about, just the tip. Okay. So then I will take the nose cone off. And I will double check to make sure that that is clean, which is this little piece right here. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if it was in focus, but I don't think you really care too much. Now the key is not to bend your needle, okay? So before I take the big nose cone off, what I'm going to do is loosen my needle, pull my needle back, tighten my needle, and spray a little bit more, and scrub a little bit more. Now in doing so, my water inside here has turned blue, which means the needle had a lot of paint on it, which is good. I'm getting that paint off the needle. Next thing I'm going to do is get the very front nose cone off. All right, so the second nose cone piece. And as you can start to see, blue paint is coming out. Now if I drop it in the bucket, oh well, I'll dig it out. But hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay, now this thing has got all sorts of blue paint in there, so I'm glad I took that off. I will drop that down there. Again, I'm going to clean the tip of this brush off. Okay, getting that off and rinsing. Okay, the good thing is, is my airbrush needle is looking good. Oh yeah, looking real good. Okay. Still a little bit in here that needs to be cleaned, but the water is taking care of that. So the reason I do this is just to ensure that my needle is clean. Now I'm going to completely disassemble this thing, which if you guys want, in a later episode I can do that for you, is take this thing completely apart and like really show you how to care for and disassemble it but let us know in the comments if that's something you would like okay but for now I basically got this thing eh, clean enough to where I can switch colors which is what I'm gonna do after I draw my needle back all right so like I said if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments I'm gonna get the rest of this thing cleaned out so I can switch paint because I got a few other things I need to clean and kind of go from there. Again, if you have any comments, please let me know in the uh, comment section and I will do my best to answer and or make an in-depth cleaning video on how to clean the airbrush. 
I don't know what Mike's gonna label this or Sean's gonna label it. it. Might be just, you know, painting with an airbrush, cleaning with an airbrush. I don't know. But I'll leave that to them and we'll kind of go from there. So, it's no further ado. I hope you folks have a great rest of your week or weekend. But until then, try not to play your games badly.